Well, on the one hand, it's absolutely true that for the Estonians, the very idea of homosexual relations is disgusting. Uh, the moral, uh, moral understanding of the nation, of the people, still is very, very strongly opposed to this kind of practices. But on the other hand, what we are seeing is that the homosexual movement is practicing very effectively their tactic of desensitivizing the society. You see, that's ha that has been uh, one of their uh, strategic um, um, techniques from the very beginning. That keep talking about it all the time, all the time, all the time, talk about homosexuality, homosexuality, homosexuality. And what happens as time passes is that people get used to it. In the beginning it's disgusting and it's scandalizing, but in the end, you know, people already think that, well, if everybody speaks about it, then, you know, how bad can it be? And, um, and that's why it's also so necessary for us to step in here and to, to bring the debate back to the original foundations. You see already now in Estonia, already in many Western countries for years, the debate is not about, uh, it's not on moral grounds anymore. You know, you're talking about equal rights and tolerance and so on. But the debate is already, has already been shifted from the very basic question of, its, uh, of, the, of, of morality. It's a grave sin to practice homosexual relations. It's gravely immoral. And therefore the law should not give any recognition to, you know, there are very, I'd say it again, there are two very different approaches the law can take towards unmoral behavior. We all know that the law needs to tolerate immoral behavior to a certain extent because otherwise we would have a, an oppressive state if we punished every act of immorality. But it's a completely different thing if the state and the law starts to give recognition to lifestyles which are completely immoral. So um, that's what they want to do and that's what we want to oppose. Now, um, the problem in Estonia is that um, from the Soviet times we have this uh, heritage that people do not understand that this is really our country. And if we want to, uh, to influence the future of the country, we really need to do something ourselves. It's us who need to do things. So what we see as a very prevalent phenomenon is that people complain about bad things, but they are not always ready to do something about it themselves. And that's uh, wh where our, our movement has really started making a difference. It shows to people that we can actually make a difference. And nobody, hel nobody else will come to save us, you know, uh, in human terms, if we don't want to fight for ourselves. And, uh, and that's something um, which people are coming to understand, slowly, but I think surely. We need to do something. And if we don't do anything, then we are then we need to accuse ourselves of all the bad things that are happening. And in this sense, what we see in France, for example, right now, what we see in Croatia, what we see in uh, various other countries, is the revival of true democracy, the, the revival of a true understanding of democracy. Because uh, when we think um, what, ha what has been going on throughout the last decade, uh, in the European Union, in all the parliaments, all the people who are in power, they speak about democracy all the time, but they don't actually like democracy. Mm -hmm. They want to portray themselves as democrats, but on the other hand, they want to uh, oppose on people these kind of ideologies, which people don't actually accept. So there is nothing democratic about this. Uh, so our movements are actually part of the revival of true democracy, that people themselves will say what they think, what they accept, what they don't accept, what they deem true, what they deem false, what they regard as moral, what they regard as immoral, and they will say that we want our countries to be organized according to our understanding of the good. And that's the only way, in my opinion, how democracy can work at all. No, it cannot be that uh, there are some uh, enlightened minds who all the time speak about democracy, but they don't actually want to practice it. And um, it has been very interesting now in Estonia that um,
before our campaign, there was already a popular movement which demanded that if uh, there are 25,000 signatures or more, there needs to be a referendum. I mean, if people ask for a referendum and they collect 25 signatures or more, then the state should actually provide for a referendum. But now, as we collected 38,000 signatures, already the president of the Republic started saying that, well, you see, it's a very problematic idea. I'm not so sure that we should actually, you know, accept this right to call the referendum because some small groups uh, might start abusing this and so on. So we see very clearly that they don't actually like democracy. But it is our task now to uh, teach them again to start appreciating uh, uh, the democratic principle, so to say. And um, to add to what I said before, just uh, as a small addition, uh, we, we can really see that our campaign has uh, rocked the country. It has really uh, shaked the country in the sense that even the president of Estonia made a public declaration in one of his uh, presentations at the conference that we have carried out a very forceful, forceful campaign, a very strong campaign. Um, and of course he called it a disgrace and, uh, and, uh, and something which uh, makes him uh, be ashamed of our country. Uh, but it's very interesting to see that um, the president says that he is ashamed of 40,000 people, but at the same time, the popularity of the president himself has dropped to 20%. So at current, uh, only about 20% of Estonian people actually trust the president. So we see that uh, there is uh, an increasing divide between public authority and public opinion. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a good thing in the sense that it allows people to understand that these people who have actually grabbed power, they don't work for the good of the society, for the good of the nation. And, uh, and that's a very, very important realization.